Okay, here we go. This is Yates Tavern. It was constructed in the mid-1700s. It was built by a Revolutionary War veteran, Stephen Yates. And it was an early bed and breakfast. This road was a major conduit. It's kind of a small road now, but it was a major conduit from the East Coast, places like Boston and Philadelphia, Richmond, for people heading down south. And he built this as a place for people to spend the night. The building is an architectural style called Hall and Parlor Tidewater, a traditional British style of architecture that was common before railroads. This particular style of architecture always features heavy timber walls and large porches. There's a window in there. You know what, let's go take a peek. Do you think we can look inside? I'm gonna guess it's locked. Yeah, it is, but let's see if we can see in the window. No, well, yeah, maybe. Uh, okay. Looks like an old table. I'm behind the building now. You can see a couple little windows up there. I guess that's where people would sleep. Fascinating. This is Sharswood Plantation. It was built in the late 1700s. This particular architecture is called Carpenter Gothic. That means it uses Gothic style architecture, but is built with wood. See this occasionally. It's always interesting to see it again. I love it. Now this was an old tobacco plantation and it was manned and operated by slaves. In fact, there are slaves quarters dotting the grounds from what I understand. I'm wondering if maybe that was one right there. But anyway, amongst the slaves that worked here were a married couple named Violet and David Miller. Now we'll get back to them. In 2020, a retired United States Air Force veteran named Frederick Miller. Did you know his name is the same as theirs? Yeah, anyway, Frederick Miller bought this plantation with the intent to preserve it. Now, he's African American. He didn't know when he bought this that his great-great-grandparents, the same Violet and David Miller, worked here. What a surprise that must have been. An amazing surprise. That <laughs> a place where his great-great-grandparents were slaves is a place that he owns now. A great-great-grandson. That's just a great story, isn't it? Can you guys see that cat? A little side note. There's a cat roaming the grounds. Okay, everyone, I am entering the town of Chatham, Chatham, Virginia. Peak population of this town was in 1960. There were a little over 1,800 people here. Today, there are a little over 1,200. But I got to tell you guys, I've already driven through the town. It sure seems a lot bigger than 1,200 people. Hmm. So there are, well, let's start with the median age. It's 36 years old. 53% of this town is male. Last 47 is female. 74% of this town is white. 17% is black. 
1% is Hispanic. The last 8% is mixed race. You can see this downtown. It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm gonna stop and get out on foot, show you a couple things. Mainly this county courthouse right here and tell you its place in history, but we'll get to that in a second. Uh, let's see, median household income here is 52,300. That's a little over a thousand a week. I'm exiting downtown and wow, the neighborhoods, I mean, holy cow. Look at these big churches. Beautiful homes. I mean, holy mackerel. Uh, so far, this town is nothing short of astonishing. Absolutely beautiful. Huh. Well, I'm going to head back downtown and I'll tell you some more. Let's see, I told you the income, didn't I? $1,000 a week. Poverty? thinking it's probably going to be pretty low, right? It is. 5% overall. Children 17 and under? 1%. I think that's the lowest I've ever seen. 1% children's poverty in this town. Folks 65 and older, it is 11%. I was looking at the unemployment rate. It's 0.06. That's pretty much everyone who wants a job and some who don't are employed in this town. Cost of living here is 12% lower than the U.S. as a whole. Uh, housing is 26% lower. Anyway, here is this county courthouse. This building was built in 1853. It's Greek revival, so it's got cues from ancient Greece. This building is not only on the National Register, it is also a U.S. National Historic Landmark. Why? Well, in March of 1879, the county judge for this county, his name was J.D. Coles, he was arrested by a U.S. Marshal for refusing to include local African Americans on jury lists for criminal cases held in this courthouse. Now this violated the 14th Amendment. So what did Judge Coles do? Well he challenged the arrest in a case called Ex Parte Virginia, a landmark civil rights case. The Supreme Court upheld the arrest and conclusively affirmed that 14th Amendment will be enforced and quite simply this you're gonna to have to let black people be on juries from now on interesting isn't it even more interesting there is a Confederate monument right here on the grounds of this courthouse from what I understand the daughters of the Confederacy still places flowers on this monument every year on Confederate Memorial Day. Uh, what is it? 53rd Virginia Regiment, Armistead's Brigade, Pickett's Division, and their comrades in arms of Pennsylvania County. Well, that is interesting. Let's see, what else about this town? It was named after William Pitt, the first Earl of Chatham of England. He was the Prime Minister of England in 1766 through 68. 
So, the crime rate. I'm sure you guys are interested. What is the crime rate here? Last year, one. One incident. One. That is the lowest crime rate I have ever seen in any town that I've been to. Zero violent crime and one property crime. Uh, it just says theft. One crime in this entire town for a year. Doesn't even seem possible, does it? That is the craziest thing. Well, a quick drive off Main Street and I saw this. Town Hall. It's pretty awesome, huh? And look at some more houses in the neighborhoods near downtown. There's a place that could use a little TLC. Potential's there, though. It really is. Whoa, right next door, there's another one. That um, must be abandoned, pretty sure. But, you know, across the street, got beautiful houses. I mean, look at the neighborhoods. It's a fantastic. This town feels wealthy, to be honest with you. Okay, well, I'm going to head to the last town. It is actually a city, and it is very historical in its roll uh, as far as the end of the Civil War. So yeah, let's head there right now. All right, everyone, I am in the small city of Danville. Danville, Virginia. Some history of the town as I show you the lovely downtown that they have here. Uh, this town in the early 1800s became one of the top producers of tobacco in the world. In the late 1800s, the railroad came to town and it got even bigger because then they were able to export the tobacco produced here all over the country and yes, all over the world. During the Civil War, Danville was a strategic location for the Confederacy because of the rail lines and where it was in the South. And it was a major supply point, an organizational uh, area. It was also where they kept a prison of the Union soldiers that they would capture. As many as 5,000 at a time were kept here. Now, that ended when the Union Army on the outside of town tore up the railroad tracks that came into town and that particular event has been immortalized in song. I don't know if you've ever heard the song The Night They Drove Old Dixie Down. Those of you who are older, yes I know you know who or are familiar with that song. Probably the Joan Baez version but anyway yeah that event is immortalized in that song. That's what that song is about. This was the third and last capital of the Confederacy. So when Richmond fell, and of course Richmond was the second Confederate capital, 
The president of the Confederacy, Jefferson Davis, and his cabinet hightailed it down here to Danville, and Danville for eight days was the capital of the Confederate States. Of course, then the Civil War ended. Jefferson Davis uh, went directly south of here into North Carolina, and that was the end of it. Here's a mural depicting Danville. Looks like early 1900s, I would guess. It's pretty nice. Well, let me tell you some of the stats of the town as I make my way around downtown. Uh, peak population was in 1990. There were 53,000 people here. Today, there are a little over 42,000. Uh, median age here is 41. 54% of the town is female. 46% is male. Let's go check out this building here. It looks pretty incredible, doesn't it? Now, this is the most imposing building downtown. Pretty sure it's the tallest in the city. It is a Masonic temple. That's what it says here. I'm surprised to see that it appears to be abandoned and empty. That's just crazy. A huge building like this. But it sure does look, well, it's in very poor condition. No question about that. Yeah, I'm gonna guess this is locked. Yeah. Sure looks like it's just sitting here empty. Look at all the rust here. That surprises me. Wow. They have something here called Union Street Park in downtown. This looks real nice. Yeah, I like that. All right, so let's see. Let's do the race breakdown. The town is 49% black, 41% white, 5% Hispanic, 1% Asian, last 4% is mixed race. It's a great old building. Yeah, there's another mural here downtown. Not sure what it means exactly, but I'm guessing something to do with tobacco. All right, uh, the median household income in this town is $39,000 a year. That's $748 a week. Uh, poverty, it's a bit on the high side. 23% overall. Children 17 and under, it is 35%. Folks 65 and over, it is 13%. So what's the cost of living? It is 19% lower than US overall. Mostly because of housing, which is 47% lower. And you're looking at the chart there. Most everything is two to 9% lower than the US. Let's see, unemployment here is 3.8%. That's actually pretty good. The U.S. overall, it is 4.7. So unemployment here is lower. I am in a place called the River District right now. Uh, you can see they have done some 
improvements here. It looks quite nice. So let's take a look at crime. It's a little on the high side here. Last year, 35 incidents per 1,000 people. That compares to 23 for the US. Mostly property crime. 32 of those 35 were property crimes. The median home value in this town is $92,000. That's really low. For the US, it's 322,000. So what is that? Three and a half times lower. I'm seeing lots of nice stuff here though. Uh, really nice job renovating the area. This uh, warehouse district, it's pretty awesome. The town was named after an ancient town from biblical times, the town of Dan. Uh, the northernmost town in the kingdom of Israel. Now that surprised me. I would have never guessed the town's name was biblical. <laughs> if somebody would have asked me, I would have just said, probably named after a guy named Dan. But no. That would not be the case. It's real quiet. It is, um, what is today? Today is Monday, yeah. Second week in December. Danville River District. Yeah, the city's done a good job with this area. It's real nice. And I've seen some housing down here too. I mean, that's, that's the way you do it. You know, if you're going to have a vibrant downtown, you got to have people living there. And they seem to be working on that here in Danville. They even have a tattoo shop. You want to get young people living in your town, you know, the city center, you got to have a tattoo shop. I think we all know that. This is the Sutherland Mansion. It was owned by a wealthy tobacco producer. This is also where the Confederacy died. This was the final temporary Confederate White House, if you will, or capital location. It is inside those walls that Jefferson Davis, the president of the Confederacy, signed the final proclamation. He was here for eight days and then it was all over. Civil War was over. That was the end of the Confederacy. It is the Danville Museum of Fine Arts and History now. So inside, they have a lot of local history. Uh, interestingly, this was a library in the 30s up to 60s. And I was reading about it. African Americans weren't allowed to use this library. So they had a sit in. The library was forced to close, then reopen. But they reopened without chairs to make it as inconvenient as possible for African American students to use it. Here's a placard on the grounds Last Confederate Capital. This, the former home of Major W.T. Sutherland, is regarded as the last capital of the Confederacy. April 3rd through 10th, 1865, here President Davis stayed and here was held the last full cabinet meeting, Breckenridge alone being absent. The establishment of the Confederate government in Danville ended when the news of Lee's surrender arrived on April 10th. Yeah, and then President Davis headed into North Carolina and it was over with. It was interesting reading some of the reviews about this museum because it is both a civil rights museum and a Confederate museum 
a lot of people don't agree with both being together. I, I think they can coexist. You know, the important thing is not to sweep history under a rug. It should be there for everyone to see because that's how we learn from our mistakes. And, um, well, that's all I'm going to say about that. I'll let you guys discuss. I'm just going to walk down the street and show you some of the houses. Right here next to this house because, wow, they are incredible. Yeah, these are incredible. There is no sign of the high poverty and low home values here. What did I say it was? 92,000? That is an incredible looking home. And they just go down the street, house after house. All incredible, all in beautiful. I mean, wow. Yeah, so I'm going to get in the Jeep. Check out some other neighborhoods. Because surely they all don't look like this. Let's see, I'm on the street right next to the uh, Sutherland house that I just showed you. Wow, would you look at that. Uh, these are all beautiful. That's kind of to be expected though. There is a house here for sale. So I thought it might be fun for someone to look it up. I'm on Sutherland Street. This is 151 Sutherland. What do you think they want for that? Well, just for fun, someone check it out. Tell the rest of us. I'm a couple blocks down the road, farther. While they're not the big mansions we were seeing, uh, a lot of these still look pretty good. A lot of colors, huh? Yeah, you see a little bit of the low home values here, the poverty. There seems to be a pretty big divide between more well-off people and the poor. This one's set an empty here, boarded up. Oh look, here's the second cat. Looks like he's out on a hunt. Yeah, things are definitely a little bit different here. Interesting. It's an interesting town. You can see they've done a lot of nice work here. The loss of manufacturing left all those empty warehouses downtown, but they're doing a great job re uh, rejuvenating that area. Well, I'm going to go over the hill here. Yeah, and there's downtown right there. Basically driving back into it. All right, everyone, so that is the end of this video. Up next, I'm heading due south into North Carolina. 
So that will be next. Be looking for that. I will see you there. Now here is a unique architectural style that you don't see every day. Interesting, huh? They just put a big roof over their mobile home. Wow. And then there's a big satellite dish right there. Or not a big one, a little one, but still. That's pretty awesome.